What's up guys, David here from Fallen Buff, and earlier this week, I had the chance to swing by the NVIDIA booth at CES 2014 to take a closer look at the brand new processor they announced in the Tegra K1. Now, technically, the K1 is the successor to the Tegra 4 that we saw last year, but for whatever reason, NVIDIA opted not to call it the Tegra 5 like you would expect, and instead is calling it the K1, which is probably a good idea by NVIDIA because right off the bat, the K1 name tells you that this new chip isn't just an upgrade over the Tegra 4, and instead, at least for NVIDIA, it may very well be a game changer. So the CPU inside this thing is a four core CPU capable of being clocked at up to 2.3 gigahertz with an additional core or a companion core for low energy tasks such as when your phone is on standby or if you're just using your phone or tablet for something that doesn't require a lot of power like reading an article on a web page. Now obviously when you need more power, the K1 is gonna kick on additional cores one by one up to a maximum of four so that way you have a good balance between performance and battery life. But as interesting as all that sounds, it wasn't the CPU that really got me excited about the K1 and it's not what really drew me to the booth at CES and instead, it was the GPU that really caught my eye. Now, this new GPU is based off of the Kepler architecture, which is probably why they named it the K1, but this architecture is a first on a mobile chip and is what you would typically find on a desktop class CPU, which means you get support for things like DirectX 11, OpenGL 4.4, and NVIDIA's own CUDA Core 6. Now that, and the 192 CUDA cores that this GPU has, will most likely combine to give you really, really good graphics and gaming performance. So much so that NVIDIA went as far as saying that the K1 can either match or surpass the performance on the last gen consoles, like the Xbox 360 or the PS3. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been playing GTA 5 recently on my Xbox 360 and I think the graphics look really, really good. So having graphics like that on a tablet or on a phone would be just downright amazing. But of course, the challenge is actually getting games ported over to Android that can actually take full advantage of the K1's power because right now the games on Android won't even come close. But Nvidia does say that the game developers will have an easier time porting their games over because of the Kepler architecture that the GPU is based off of. Now, I think the determining factor in all of this as far as us getting games ported over to Android isn't necessarily the K1 itself, but instead how popular the K1 becomes. Because if the K1 is anything like the Tegra 4 that we saw last year, which just wasn't adopted widely by many factors and never really became mainstream, then game developers won't have any incentive to port their games over. But if the K1 does become popular and it's adopted by a big manufacturer like Sony, HTC, Samsung, or someone similar, then game developers just may have enough incentive to do that and that in and of itself can very well change the future of gaming on Android. So the NVIDIA Taker K1 could very well be a game changer quite literally. But anyways, that's pretty much it for me in this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button for more mobile technology videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video.